Hello again. Uh, this is the last video in a series of videos that I've done showing how I create a low poly uh, model. Uh, now that we've decomposed the UV coordinates of the, um, the model, uh, I'm going to go through the process that I do for texturing it using a 64 by 64 texture map, so it's kind of like pixel art in a way. Um, and this video, as opposed to the others, is not in real time because it took almost two hours, so I've compressed that down into uh, just about 10 minutes. Um, and without further ado, we'll watch that and I'll try and narrate what's going on as, I, as we're watching it. Okay, so uh, here again is our tank model, which we've had the texture decomposed, and what I've done is created a layer called color, and I've decided to make the tank red. And this just creates a base layer for our texture map. And so the first thing I'm going to do are the treads of the tank, and I'm just going to do a simple little sort of repeating pattern uh, across the entire width of the texture. You could probably compress it down into an even smaller space to uh, save space basically, but it allows us to properly texture the bottom of the tank tread with uh, so they're not like the, the treads aren't too wide. And so what I'm doing is I'm selecting all the different um, faces on the top here and I'm moving them around so they're all the treads are going in the right direction. Uh, if they're not you can in the UV editor you can select the triangles and scale them in like the, like we did with the model. You can scale it in the negative uh, X direction and it'll flip it or the negative Y depending on how your texture is oriented. So basically it's you know little things that count. So now what I'm going to do is what I'm working on is the uh, the wheel inside the front and the back of the tank treads and I've done a little circular gradient uh, and I've selected a circle and cut it out and it's a bit of trouble here trying to make it look nice but it uh, again taking a bit of time to um, just add a little touches help make it look better so I'm uh, moving around the um, this black area where the circle is to give it a bit more room so I can move move it around uh, sort of so it's not too distorted uh, next is what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a gray line uh, that sort of creates, makes it look like the tread actually has a thickness to it. Um, it doesn't look absolutely perfect on the edges because it's obviously pixelated, but uh, you can sort of fill it in and it doesn't look too bad from a distance. You now it's the bottom of the tread, it's just three pixels high. In retrospect, this because it's all the same, it could be like one pixel wide, and but if you wanted, you could create like a pattern on the side of the tread. And now I'm doing the uh, border of the raised edge, the sort of bulky area that contains the rest of the track. Um, I started out with this light blue color, but uh, it didn't quite fit out. But we'll or work out, in my mind. Just fitting the other elements of the track in on the side for work later. Uh, now I decided to make it gray and add a gradient. And gradients are your friend in doing any sort of texture work. It gives it sort of a depth and a presence that a solid color doesn't always do, basically. So just, you know, even like a three pixel gradient like that I find makes it look better. And I started making these sort of rivets and I wasn't really happy with them so I decided to make the side of the because it's so it's such a predominant visual element because it's so big I've made them wider and taller and, and put these sort of vents here on the sides. Again using gradients and then a square sort of uh, two color uh, raised rectangular area. I'm going to do the same on the top. Um, another thing is, is one of the one of the layers I created is called overlay and actually just uses an overlay style blending mode and what you can do is then just draw in like a uh, grayscale on top of the red and it changes the lightness or the darkness of it like I'm doing here on the top. 
just creating little sort of elements, little arrow looking things on the sides here. Just again, little tiny visual touches kind of help break up the monotony of it. And I'm going to do the front and the back of the uh, sort of the pillars that support the body of the tank. I'm going to make vents. These vents are cool and always a good thing that to add to your uh, mechanical and industrial models. And again, more gradients to make it look like there's a bit of depth to it. And I decided to widen it a bit because it wasn't, it's it's such a, really it's such a small part of the texture map and such a big part of the, the model. So it makes it look a bit better. And then note what I did here is the sort of unusually shaped top surface of the tank. I made it square and when I put this raised edge around the border, it's going to follow the edges of the uh, the triangles, and that kind of helps a little. And now I'm going to do the uh, the gun on the turret. Surprise, surprise, is going to use a gradient. Uh, I use this sort of just a little square um, hole on the front with a, what looks like a shadowed edge that again gives it a bit of depth. Um, it's an easy little trick. And what I'm doing now is taking all the triangles on the bottom part of the turret and making them all the same, like take up the same area. So what happens is, is it'll be repeated around the peripheral and I'm just going to create a track or like um, a slot that the so it looks like that's where the turret turns. Um, and the other thing is I shrunk it down to be one pixel wide, so it doesn't take a lot of space, because that's all it needs to be. And I'm obviously running out of room on the texture map here. So again, more ra raised edges, uh, more slats on the back, and I, again, on parts that mirror each other, I select the UV map for that face, and I copy them so they're overlapping each other. And I'm going to make a sort of, I'll try to make a ladder looking on thing on the side here. It didn't quite work out, so I shrunk it down. That didn't work out, and I made it look like solid pieces, and that didn't work out. So I'm uh, just sort of giving it a bit more detail to make it look better. And now on the front, um, Again, this is this is very free form. I mean, it's just sort of uh, you know playing around. It's like you know think well. I think this will look good, and then does it look good? And so I created these portholes, and they look like the tank had eyes. So I got rid of them because it looked like Thomas the Tank Tank. I guess I don't know. Um, so I created these grills. Gives it a bit more of a mean look, and that got adjusted after. The other thing is is with the top of the tank. Even though it is octagonal, I've expanded the triangles in the UV map out to be square. So when I draw, I'm fixing up the slats on the front now. Uh, even though the like it, I drew that border and I created an octagonal border, which is another neat trick. And for the front of the tank where the turret is, I just overlapped another part of the texture map. And I'm just doing some fine-tuning um, of uh, one of the textures here on the back. Uh, and making that actually a solid gray. And now the front and the bank, back of the centerpiece of the tank. I'm just playing around with what I feel looks good sort of fine-tuning things. I uh, decided to add a sort of spot on the top of the tank to make it look like a hatch or something like that, and I just drew a little square. And that makes it an octagonal shape on the top. Uh, and then the back part of the center undercarriage of the tank. And I just duplicated the uh, treads flipped them over and brought them over and then welded them to the other points and I'm adjusting the width of the treads to make the tank look a bit more compact. 
And I noticed I made a mistake with the texture map on the side here, so I'm just moving the turret part, and I just got some email, uh, and the other parts overlapped, and there we go.